They, they fight to the end. They're being more and more competitive uh, later on. You would think that uh, with a team, the way they're playing, their record doesn't show uh, the way they compete each and every night. Like you said, the last three games were close. They had uh, Norfolk State here at home, lost that one by three. They had North Carolina Central, and that game went into overtime. And then they turned around and, and had South Carolina State on a, 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 a I guess, a subjective call when uh, Dominique was shooting a three and the ref called it, which would have would have changed the outcome of the game. So they're they're doing all the right things. They're just one step short of winning that final or that first, I should say, yeah. conference win. And, and they've lost the last three games by a combined 13 points. Yeah. One, one of them by three points and the other two by five, the overtime game and then the game against South Carolina State on uh, Monday night. This game is just, uh, this team is just on the verge of, of doing something good. And I have a feeling that if they can win today and then get one out of two in these last two games after today, they might be a team to be reckoned with in the tournament. I don't know about going deep, well, but they could surprise somebody. Well, I think that the thing is, the way they're playing, 
After what they did to Norfolk State, I think all the coaches in the MEAC are keeping an eye out on what Dell State is doing because, again, they're giving a lot of coaches uh, their team's lessons on being competitive the whole entire game now. It, it, they, they have steadily grown from not being able to finish an entire game to finishing a game. Now they just have to take that one more step and, and complete the whole journey by winning at least one conference game before going into the MEAC tournament. They were deep into the month of January before Stan Waterman was able to get a healthy team together. I sat down with him on the side uh, one day in December, uh, mid-December, just before the holiday break, and at that point, he still had not been able to have a five-on-five -five practice. Now, <laughs> it's hard to put a team together to win if you can't practice five-on-five. -five. Yeah. So he had to wait until he got some people back uh, healthy, and when they did, they started to contribute. And it was just a matter of time until they would start to contend in these games. They played well. Now they just have to finish. Right. Because with the, with the shortness of players, you end up doing a lot of drill work, almost like individual instruction, the same things that you would do over the summer. But now you can go over game situations, uh, certain timeout situations when you're able to scrimmage and you have five on five in your practice. And I'll tell you what, it's not bad to have that individual instruction from a coach like Stan Waterman, who did so much of it in the high school ranks. You have to do that there. So he was able to come in here late in the game when he got hired in June with a team that was pretty much unfamiliar to him. He was only able to bring in a couple of more players to add to this squad. Then he could do the, the individual instruction find out the capabilities of his individual players, find out what they were going to be good for, and start to build that rapport with them. And, and now as we come to the end of the season, it's starting to show. Right. Well, he's a, he's a tournament coach. I mean, he is. when he was in high school, that's, that's all we used to call it, the Sanford <laughs> tournament, because they were always in it. So now he's, he's used to this time of the year, and hopefully he'll change things around. Has such a great positive attitude, even though uh, these last few games are just so frustrating for him to be that close to the win, but not able to take it home. The official sponsors of HSRN are American Spirit, Federal Credit Union, Symphony Potato Chips, Fred Drake Automotive, B2 L29 Premium Alkaline Water, America's Mortgage Coach, John Millett, the Alley Group Insurance Agency, and the Little Creek Fire Company. I'm Gary Lang. Charles Robinson with me today as we get ready for this one to get underway. We're just a couple of minutes away from the opening tip. A little bit later start. Usually there's a half hour between games. That was extended today because of senior recognition. And Delaware State has a bunch of guys playing their final home game here today. It's going to be quite a new squad for Stan Waterman next year as he's going to be up. He's already out recruiting. Right. Uh, a couple of weeks ago we were talking and he told me, I've got two possible recruits here watching tonight. So he's out there looking for the players he wants. He has all the contacts in the state of Delaware to try to attract some of the top players. And he's been very involved with AAU, the regional uh, situation out of Philadelphia. And that's where he also has established his networking and, and people know what he's about and the kind of players he's looking for. Right. But, well, like you said, I think coming in a little later than most coaches that were hired last year, it, it's setting back just a little bit when it came to recruiting and getting to know his team as, as quick as he wanted to. But now, I think everybody's familiar with what everybody can do, and now they're going to make their final push going towards the MEAC tournament. Seven Delaware State men's players recognized for their final game, the home game here today, and they are Dominic Fergala, John Stansberry, Ronald Lucas, Fahim Gennetto, Chris Sodom, Miles Carter, and Zach Kent. Those seven won't be here next year. For the women, they had only one senior recognized, and that was Janasia Law. And boy, is she going to be missed next year. She had her season high this afternoon against Morgan State with 21 points. So eight seniors were recognized here before the game, seven of them on the men's team, and, and Janasia Law representing the women. Now, along the way, some of the other seniors were on that women's team. Uh, they, they left the program. So Janasia Law was the only senior remaining. So 
the women have been playing with underclassmen, a lot of freshmen, and even a couple of walk-ons as we got down to the last part of the season here. Well, it's going to be, you know, not. I, I won't say it'll be difficult for Coach Hill because now I think everybody knows her philosophy. What does coach want out of me? What does coach expect from me on a daily basis? And that helps when you have a lot of returners, even though that senior leadership is going to be missed. Player introductions going on here for Delaware State um, as they're introducing the starting lineup. A couple of them playing their final games here today. Martez Robinson, he'll be back hopefully next year as he has really shown well for Delaware State. This uh, sophomore who had a little bit of playing time last year, he did very well in Baltimore County, Maryland uh, before he came to Delaware State. He'll be back next year, but he'll start today. DeMarco Balkum will also be back next year. But then you have Chris Sodom, Miles Carter, and Zach Kent. They're seniors. This is their final game in Memorial Hall. Hopefully they'll put on a good show. And Miles Carter has been putting on a show all season here for Delaware State. And he is being recognized for it. He's getting opportunities here after the season ends to showcase himself that maybe he can go on to another level. Yes, he's playing in a couple of all-star games that are held for HBCU athletes. And again, he, he's shown great leadership here uh, even though he started out as a walk-on here at Delaware State. And a lot of the guys are going to try to hopefully win this one for him on his last day uh, playing in uh, Memorial Hall. So Stan Waterman's going to put out the big team to start with. He's got the seven, three, seven foot three uh, Chris Sodom out there as a starter and the 6'10 Zach Kent on the floor. Also DeMarco Balkum who uh, takes up a lot of space inside, not only has the size at 6'6", but he has some bulk to him. He'll be in there and banging around with the people on the inside. Morgan State is an inside team. They don't shoot outside very often. They do a lot of stuff in the paint. Chad Venning gets the opening tip off to teammate Seventh Woods. Morgan State to start the ball there in the dark blue uniforms with orange numerals and their names on the back of the jersey in orange. Delaware State in white with the red numerals and red trim. Morgan State moving the ball around. Baseline jumper by Sherwin Devonish, and it misses. Ball went out of bounds. Touch, though, by Delaware State. It will be Morgan State ball. Seventh Woods to inbound the ball for the Bears. Long pass in to Devonish. Devonish takes it around, sends it left side. Shot for three. Missing. Loose ball grabbed by Malik Miller for Morgan State. They work it back around over to Trevor Moore on the left side. Now they go into the paint. It's Chad Venning. His shot blocked. Ball on the floor. Loose ball. See who comes up with it. And the Hornets get it. Good effort there by DeMarco Balkum. Had to struggle inside. And we're going to have a foul here. And they're going to see who this one goes on. Oh, it's going to go on 7th Woods as he stepped in front of Miles Carter. Carter not afraid of the contact. Seventh Woods called for the first foul of the game. Comes with 19-11 left in the first half on the Hornets' first possession. Not bad. They're keeping it packed inside, hoping that Morgan State will start shooting threes. Kent inbounds it to Martez Robinson. Robinson gets it off to Carter in the middle. Carter slips around the left side with it. Off a pick by Zach Kent. Works it inside to Balkum. Balkum. Tried to clear it, turned around, took the jumper and got it. And the Hornets go in front first. Two nothing, Delaware State. A minute and 15 seconds into the game. Devonish. To the left side, to Woods, back to Devonish. Tried to work inside, ball slapped out of his hand. Touched last by Sherwin Devonish. Zach Kent slapping that ball away. Dell stays off to a good start so far. Playing some good defense, working under the boards, not letting Morgan State get the easy move inside. The inbound pass goes to Miles Carter. They'll double up on him in the backcourt. He needs some help. The ball tipped, taken away by Morgan State, and the easy layup by Seventh Woods ties it up at two. Morgan they needed State. to recognize Miles Kent was in trouble there in the backcourt. As the Hornets tried to inbound it to Martez Robinson, the Bears 
contesting the inbound pass, and Robinson stepped out of bounds with the ball. Turn it over to Morgan State. Yeah, Morgan State is starting to apply pressure by picking up full court. They'll get it into Venning. Venning gets a, a bump from Martez Robinson. It's Woods, top of the key, looks inside, gets it into Malik Miller. Miller has it taken out of his hands by Miles Carter. Not the first time anybody's had that happen. Miles Carter had to delay the layup off the glass as the defense caught up with him, and he got it to go. 4-2 game. Now Chris Sodom gets the rebound down at the other end for Delaware State. Gets it off to Robinson. Robinson brings it down, takes it into the right side of the lane, drives. He gets fouled on the way in. Yeah. Chad Venning picks up the foul. His first, it's the team's second foul, and it will send Martez Robinson to the line for Delaware State. Robinson on the season, 26 of 38 from the line. That's 68.4%. He'll shoot two here. As they set it back up. Robinson standing at the line waiting for the officials to give him the ball so he can shoot. Martez did a good job penetrating, trying to force the contact. Yep. Drops down the first one. Foul shooting so important uh, down the stretch there. If Delaware State's women had hit a few foul shots, they might have been able to sneak away with that win. Robinson's second shot missing. And Morgan State brings it down quickly on the right side. Now they'll send it into the middle to Devonish. Devonish left side to Trevor Moore. They work it back around. Devonish in the middle, top of the key. Over to Moore on the left. Moore goes inside now to Lagio Granson. Granson in the paint, sends it right side. Devonish shot off the side of the backboard. Came down to Martez Robinson. Hornets looking to extend the lead here as Carter gets it on the right side. Sends it inside, takes the jumper for three. Miles Carter hits it. Nice play. Nice ball movement by Dale State that time. Carter just so confident in there, making an, an eight to two lead. Now a whistle. And that's going to be a foul on Zach Kent. And I think he was expressing a little frustration in there down at the other end when Carter made that shot. Kent had been knocked down and there was a Morgan State player over top of him. Kent couldn't get up. The player had him straddled between his feet. And Kent looked pretty frustrated by it. There's Moore. Tries to go inside and it's taken away by DeMarco Balkum. Hornets turnover. need to take advantage of these turnovers too and put points on the board with it. Kent, top of the key. Ball gets away from him. Touched by Morgan State. That's why it went in there and it went into the backcourt, but no call because it was touched by the Bears. Robinson now dribbles, moves forward, top of the key, pulls up. He's going to shoot, and it is just off the mark. Sodom's there for the rebound, comes down. Zach Kent tried to take it. But it was ripped away by Morgan State's seventh Woods. Woods from the lane. Shot missed. Sodom gets a, takes a, about a four-inch jump and reaches above the basket for the <laughs> rebound. <laughs> I can jump four inches, but I can't reach above the basket. But at 7-3, he's already up there and then reaches those long arms up. Robinson over to Carter on the right side. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Carter works along the baseline, tries to pass it to Sodom, but Sodom would have had to be about 9-3 to pull that one down. Timeout on the court here with 15.45 left in the first half. Delaware State 8, Morgan State 2, putting the U in HBCU. We're HSRN. Hi, 
I'm Scott Cameron, president of Soto Concepts, the best restaurant group in the state, and we're inviting you to come join our team. Soto Concepts is a growing hospitality company with 16 restaurants and a variety of other hospitality businesses, all located in beautiful Southern Delaware. We have recently added many departments to our executive leadership team, including a training department, a property development department, and a construction department. We invite you to come live at the beach and work with a growing restaurant group with many opportunities to advance your career. Soto Concepts Restaurant Group, come check us out. Hello, I'm Kimberly Holmes, Stroke Clinical Nurse Specialist at Bay Health, Chair of the Delaware Stroke System of Care Committee, and Board President of the Delaware American Heart and Stroke Association. I am also a proud DSU alumna. Stroke disproportionately affects African Americans. I am driven to educate my community regarding the prevention and or control of risk factors such as high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and obesity. I'm Kimberly Holmes, and I'm here for our Hornets. And he does so cleanly, gets it in, and they give it right back to him to bring it down. It'll be Lagio Granson who sends it on the right side to Isaiah Burke. Burke. Passes it into the middle to Trevor, Trevor Moore. Moore takes it left side to Detorian Ware. They work it around Burke to Ware. Now baseline move by Moore as it stripped. Came out though to Burke. Down to four seconds on the shot clock. Fade away jumper by Morgan State missing. And Sodom up there to take the rebound. He's tied up in the backcourt. Has to get rid of it. And he does. Miles Carter coming back to help him out. Carter brings it down quickly. Carter now makes a move down the right side, drives into the paint, layup, rolls around, won't go. Sodom fighting for the ball. Still a scramble for the ball. Let's see who they say touched it last. Officials saying it's going to be Hornets ball. The Morgan State coaching staff right there where it happened. Extremely unhappy with the call. Any other place that would be a technical foul. That, coat, that ref showed a lot of restraint right there, not teeing up Coach Rodas. The whole coaching staff could have gotten it. <laughs> but it, maybe he didn't because they didn't know who to call it on. <laughs> Carter now into the foul circle, turns around, looks inside, sends it back out to Balkum. Balkum, jumper, off the rim, won't go. Loose ball, Sodom might get called for coming over top. As we get the whistle, now the official over talking to the Morgan head coach. I think he's advising him that he got his one, but he's not going to get away with that again. Looks like it. Chris Sodom called for coming over top, his first personal foul. That's the second team foul. Christopher Smith now into the game. Zach Kent comes out. They'll send it down right side to Trevor Moore. He gets it off to Granson. Granson gives it off to... Devonish now left side shot for three missing Hornets come away with it it'll be Robinson who brings it down over to Balkum Balkum pulls up gets it to Robinson down near the corner on the left side good feed inside underneath to Christopher Smith he puts it up it misses the Torian Ware has the rebound for Morgan now Burke brings it down back to Ware in the middle he sends it inside just in front of the foul line to Granson Granson works inside and off the glass it's good 8-4 lead for Delaware State with 13.55 left in the half. That's where Morgan State makes their money, right there in the paint. You don't see them shoot. They shoot a lot of threes, but they're not successful. No, they're not. Uh, they, don't, they don't have anybody in, in any of the top 10 or top 50 categories in the country, and just a few in the top 10 in different categories in the MEAC. Balkum gives it off to Miles Carter. He steps back by the Hornets logo at center court. Now he steps inside the arc and puts it in for two. And this crowd wants to explode on every basket. Those who were here for the women's game really fired up for it. Trevor Moore from in front of the Hornets bench drops a three. 10-7 game. 13.05 left in the first half. Carter now works to the right side. 
A little bump there on the defender, clearing some space out as he's being covered by Isaiah Burke. Gives it off to Christopher Smith, who lays it off for Robinson. Robinson now again to Carter on the right side. Smith trying to back inside. Turns around. Needs some help. Three seconds on the shot clock. Carter with two seconds. Drop the three. That's the score right there, Gary. Big time score for you. 13-7 as Miles Carter puts it up with two seconds on the shot clock and pulls three points for the Hornets. Now it's Granson for Morgan State. Right side to Devonish. Back to Moore in the middle, over on the side to Detorian Ware, and he gets the three back for the, the uh, Bears. 13 to 10. Down to 12.05 left here in the first half. Inside now to Balkum. Balkum swinging around the top of the key. And they call a charge for some pretty incidental contact. But DeMarco Balkum gets the third team foul, his first. That gets it to a timeout with 11.59 left in the first half. The score, Delaware State 13, Morgan State 10. Putting the U in HBCU, we're HSRN. Calling all Hornets fans. Be sure to follow Bay Health on social media. Find us on Facebook at Bay Health, on Twitter at Bay Health DE, on Instagram at Bay Health. You can find us on TikTok and on LinkedIn. Bay Health, we're here for our Hornets. Hey, Hornet fans, please remember that our friends at the Microtel Inn and Suites in Dover on Route 10 near Dover Air Force Base are here to help you with your hotel needs at a discounted rate. Call them at 302-674-3800 or go online at the Delaware State University Hornets page to set up a reservation for a clean and comfortable night. Trying for their first MEAC win of the season and their first win on the season since November 16th. Morgan State with the ball. Burke sends it left side to Ware. Ware sends it back out to Burke. Burke in the middle, top of the key. They work on the left side. Ware with a jumper. Tried to get another three. Missed it. Wanted to try to tie the game with that shot. Hornets get the rebound. Carter pulls up. Comes off the front of the rim on the shot. Just a little bit soft on that one. Down the right side to Burke. Moore over to Granson and then to Ware on the left side. They'll work it around off the hands of Granson. And his shot was deflected by Chris Sodom as it went up. And the Hornets grabbed the loose ball. Good job by Chris to get that piece of that ball that time. He can make it hard for people to shoot inside when he gets in front. Martez Robinson. Trying to work it off the glass, missing. Morgan State with the ball. They send it into Burke. Now Moore at the top of the key. Baseline move, trying to go over Sodom. He tried to deflect it. I thought he hit the ball, but it still went up and in for Malik Miller. We have a 13-12 game. Robinson now working to the left side. Dribbles. Looks inside, finds a lane, pulls up next to the foul lane, sends it down in the corner to Dominic Fergala. He'll go along the baseline, send it out to Carter on the right side, hits off the rim and comes down to Detorian Ware. Quickly down court, Moore gets it off to Malik Miller. Miller's shot, he gets fouled as the ball is slapped away. Dale State is starting to play into Morgan State's hands right now. They're going up and down without any kind of continuity in their offense. That's Chris Sodom's second foul, so if we weren't at the halfway mark, just about at the halfway mark of the half, 
You might see Sodom go off, but he'll stay out there right now. Malik Miller's first shot off the rim. He missed it. Had a chance, still has a chance to tie the game. Miller, a 67% foul shooter on the season. Has only played in 12 games with 10 starts for the Bears. Coach Woodard's going to leave Sodom out there. Miller tied it up there with that second shot. We're knotted at 13. Backcourt pressure. Fregala brings it down, sends it ahead to Corey Perkins. Perkins on, on the baseline, pulls up, sends it out. Ronald Lucas goes inside to Chris Sodom. Sodom, the shot just off the mark, just a little bit to the left. And Morgan State gets the rebound. And they want to try to get the lead for the first time. Ware gives it off to Woods. Woods goes inside to Granson. Granson. Leaves it for Ware, top of the key. Drives into the lane, sends it left side to Burke. Burke shoots for three and gets it. And Morgan State gets the first time lead to make it 16-13. Morgan State contesting that inbound pass, but they commit a foul. The Torian Ware gets called for it. His first personal, and that'll be the team's third here in the first half. Dale State going into their press break right here. Ron Lucas to send it in, gets it into Corey Perkins. Perkins down the left side, the freshman who played for Coach Stan Waterman at Sanford High School on a championship team. Carter now with the ball on the left side. He'll work to the right. He's in the foul circle. Goes the left side of the lane, sends it out for Gallup for three. Off the back of the rim. And going up high is Malik Miller. He gets the rebound. Not a bad shot for Fergala right there. No, he, he usually can uh, bust open early, but he just came into the game moments ago. A dunk attempt missed. And the fans will let him know about it. Chad Venning missing the dunk. Hornets got the loose ball, come down the court, and Ronald Lucas got called for traveling on the outlet. Dominic Fergala for Delaware State. Tenth in the MEAC in scoring. He was much higher than that. And then he went on a slump, a five-game scoring slump, when he only had 11 points. He broke out over the weekend. Morgan State missing a shot. Chris Sodom going up and blocking a shot. They'll call goaltending on that. Malik Miller will get two points. Miles Carter's going to get a breather, so hopefully now Fagalo will get more attempts. They need his three-point shooting today. So on the goaltending, two points for Morgan State makes it 18-13, a five-point lead for the Bears. As they've gotten into the lead for the first time here. They need Dominic Fergala to be as hot as he was over the weekend. But he has to be on the floor to do that. Corey Perkins across center court trying to go it around. Isaiah Burke. They give it off to Martez Robinson. Robinson goes inside, pulls up, jumper that was deflected. Zach Kent trying to get the ball, bounced it. Robinson put it up, but got the ball was knocked away just after it left his hands and it went out of bounds. Hornets will keep the ball, but have just six seconds on the shot clock. Now a couple players bumping against each other. The officials are going to break that up and try to settle it down pretty quickly here. Morgan Z State is fighting for positioning in the tournament. Delaware State is fighting because they want to get their first win and nobody's given an inch. First conference win. And it's like deja vu from last year. Two seconds on the shot clock. fergala has got to put it up. And they're going to have to say they'll wave it off. The shot clock violation. He said he got it out of his hands in time. He also said he got fouled, knocked down by Detorian Ware. It's a no call. I have to agree with Fagun on that one. I think he got it off and he was fouled. Morgan State got away with one. Seventh Woods holding the ball out near center court on the right side. Ware sends it left side. Driving inside, putting it up softly and drawing the foul. It's Isaiah Burke. Let's see who gets called for the foul. Martez Robinson, his first 
That's five on the team, though. Comes with 8.01 left in the first half. Isaiah Burke goes to the line for Morgan State. Fifty-four percent foul shooter, and that's if we round up. But that doesn't matter. He drops the first shot. Six-point lead now for Morgan State, as they've gone on a bit of a scoring run, and the Hornets have gone cold. Yeah, it's been a kind of up and down game. No team has really scored a lot out of their offensive sets here. Burke's second shot is good as well. It's a seven point lead for Morgan State now. 20 to 13 over Delaware State. 8.01 left in the half. Inbounded successfully to Corey Perkins by Ronald Lucas. Perkins now across center court, works down the right side. Now looking for an open player, tried to get it to Zach Kent. Too far in front, thought Kent was going to move outside, and he didn't go outside. Out of bounds, that stops the clock. 7.48 left in the first half, and a timeout. Morgan State 20, Delaware State 13. Putting the U in HBCU, we are HSRN. Hornet fans, be sure to stop at your local Grotto's for a great meal and a legendary taste. Grotto's Pizza, the official pizza partner of DSU Athletics. The Good Brothers, proud alumni of Delaware State University and an even prouder sponsor of DSU Athletics. Follow them on Instagram at The Good Brothers LLC. Chef JJ and Chef Gamble are proud to bring you a unique meal each week with a variety of combinations and tastes from the Caribbean. It's a bite you won't regret. as Morgan State will bring the ball inbounds to get play underway again. Seventh Woods in the middle with the ball. Over to Detorian Ware, they'll work it inside to Malik Miller. He gets it back to Woods. Woods steps up, sends it back to Miller right side, tries to penetrate into the paint, does so, and puts it in. First easy basket Morgan State had after running their offense. Coach Brothers did a good job after that timeout. Now we'll see what Dell State can do. 22-13 now, a seven, a nine-point lead for Morgan State. Martez Robinson on the left side. Sends it into the middle. Miles Carter back into the game here. Gets a lot of minutes, deserves them. Hits it off the back of the rim on the three-point try. Came off and went over the hand of Zach Kent and out of bounds. Bears ball just about in front of their bench. Dell State needs to show a little bit more patience. They got to have more than just one handoff or one pass. More than one guy's got to touch the ball for Dell State to start getting some buckets. And they need some second chance opportunities too. The, the ball seems to bounce out hard and come out to Morgan State on every rebound opportunity. Ware on the left side, over to Burke in the middle, back to Ware left side. He thought about three, pulled it down. Burke in the middle sends it over to Devonish on the right side. He shoots for three, but it comes off the rim to Miles Carter. Carter, the second rebound, leading rebounder on the team. Dominic Fergala drives inside. They're going to wave off the basket, but we do have a foul. And the foul occurred well before he put the ball up. The Torian Ware picks up his second. That's the fourth team foul here in the first half. Ronald Lucas will check out for Delaware State as DeMarco Balkum comes back in. Possession for Delaware State. 
Comes into Fregala on the left side. He'll work around toward the middle. Stop part way there, back up. Now he goes in inside the arc, gives it off to Carter. Carter flashes around the left side, trying to back into the basket. Turn around jumper for Carter, missed. Kent could see that it was going to miss. He tried to get to it, but it went over his hands. Hornets then scrambling to get the ball over in front of the Morgan bench. And a bad pass cross court goes out of bounds and a turnover to Morgan State. Just out of sync all the way around with Dale State right now. Yeah. Not individual basketball. They've got to get it together. Otherwise, Morgan State's going to blow them out in their home gym. They were playing good team basketball at the beginning when they had the lead. And then they started to let things get away. Burke on the left side coming in on the baseline. Sends it to Miller in the middle and Miller dunks. Sometimes it can be the worst night of the night when it's senior night, Gary. 24-13, it started off well. Let's see if they can turn it around. Martez Robinson finds a lane to the basket, goes in, and uh, looked like uh, as he went up, the ball was touched by Morgan State. And we're gonna have a foul here. And it's going to be, I think, Trevor Moore. His first. And this is gonna send Martez Robinson to the line for Delaware State. Second trip to the line for Robinson here in the game. He was the MEAC Rookie of the Week in December of 2020. Trying to find his form here for Delaware State again. Makes the first shot. Two points for Robinson, both from the line. They trail, the Hornets trail by 10. Robinson going to try to knock that down to a single digit. He got it. There it is. Now maybe they can get something going on the defensive end and turn it into offense. Yeah, that, uh, that lid that's been on the basket is broken now. Trevor Moore goes over to Devonish. Devonish sends it inside to Miller. Back out to Devonish at the top to Burke on the left side. Out to Devonish. They work it inside to Miller. The ball batted away from Miller. Saved by Burke down in the corner. He clears it out to Devonish. Now to Moore on the right side for three. Puts it up high but off the mark. And we'll have a battle for the ball underneath. Jump ball. Dale State's ball. Hornets ball. Good hustle by Chris Sodom in there. He couldn't control the rebound, but he kept his hands on the ball. That's what you need. Now you do it like they say in practice. A stop in the score right here, Gary. Stop in the score. The official bounced the ball over to Christopher Smith. Smith wasn't looking. It bounced off his hands. And the official said, we'll redo that. Steal on the inbound by Morgan State. And as Moore goes underneath for the layup, he gets fouled. So Robinson, Martez Robinson gets his second personal foul. It's going to send Trevor Moore up to try to add points here for Morgan State. 24 of 32 on the season, 75%. Got the first one to go. Trevor Moore did not play in the game against Delaware State back on January 30th. He just made it a 10-point lead for Morgan State. And the second one goes in as well. Bears up by 11, 26-15. And a whistle as the Hornets call a timeout here with 4.51 remaining in the first half. And we're going to keep it right here. All natural gourmet tre chips with no MSG or gluten. That's Symphony Potato Chips. Order yours online at symphonychips.com. Also, Good Brothers and Chili Mo's is located right outside Memorial Hall if you're hungry or thirsty for refreshments. I know we've got uh, 4.51 left in the first half, but not too early to remind you, stay with us here at the end of the game when we'll announce the name of the 10 alarm fire player of the game presented by the Little Creek Fire Company. There are people doing backflips in my direction. <laughs> I'm glad she stopped there. 
coming right at me with the back flips across the floor. Hornets ball as we come back to action. Christopher Smith inbounds to Martez Robinson. Robinson brings it across slowly. Gets it off to Miles Carter who picks up the tempo. He does everything at a quick pace. <laughs> Morgan State fell back into a 2-3 zone. They work to the left side now. It's Corey Perkins in the middle. Steps inside the arc, passes it off on the left side. Robinson puts it up, won't go. And we have a foul underneath. Who are they going to get? I think they're going to get Christopher Smith for coming in over top on the rebound attempt. That's who it is, his first. That'll be the seventh team foul on the Hornets. So they'll bring it down here. Morgan State was ready to inbound it from down at the other end, and the officials got together, and one of them pointed out seven fouls. They're in the bonus. Bring him down and let him shoot a one and one. Malik Miller, back on the 30th of January, had 15 points against Delaware State. Hornets are hoping he doesn't get anywhere close to that here today. But he puts one in right there to make it a 12-point lead. And with a one and one, gets the next one. That one hits off the front of the rim, goes back off the backboard and drops in. 28-15 now. Hornets on the inbound. Couldn't control it. It went out of bounds, and Morgan State will get the ball. Morgan State is really frustrating Delaware State with their full court pressure. There's nothing they haven't seen before. Let's see what they're able to do here on this inbound. And it comes in cleanly to Burke. Burke gets it to Devonish. Steps into the foul circle and hits for two. His first field goal of the game, first points of the game. 30 to 15 now with 4.05 left in the first half. Miles Carter there you go. gets the That's first field goal for a while, yeah. Get the ball, be aggressive against the press. That's how you break it. 30 to 17. As Carter, maybe the only player on the team capable of running away from the defense like that. Miller now goes inside, tries it. Follow up by Colin Nanami. And Nanami makes it 32-17. 15 point lead for Morgan State. Carter rushes down court with the ball. Everybody has to catch up to him. Pulls up, sets up the offense. Tries to work inside. Sends it out. Corey Perkins. Perkins now outside the arc. Pulls inside the arc. Shoots and gets it. Corey, by Corey, Perkins right there. Corey says that's how I did it in high school, and that's why Coach Waterman likes me. <laughs> Well, he needs to keep doing it. <laughs> Here's Burke now with the ball. Guarded by Perkins. Some contact on a pass attempt. Knocked out of bounds by Martez Robinson. It'll be Bears ball now. And we have a timeout with 2.59 left in the first half. Morgan State 32, Delaware State 19. Putting the U in HBCU. We're HSRN. Hey Hornet fans, please remember that our friends at the Microtel Inn and Suites in Dover on Route 10 near Dover Air Force Base are here to help you with your hotel needs at a discounted rate. Call them at 302-674-3800 or go online at the Delaware State University Hornets page to set up a reservation for a clean and comfortable night. It's your boy Chef JJ. It's your boy Chef Gamble. And we are the Good Brothers LLC. Your official game day sponsors for DSU Athletics. Six six four zero nine nine thousand puts you in touch with America's mortgage coach John Millette. 
He can guide you through the process of getting a mortgage. Call him. 866-409-9000. 2.59 left in the first half. Hornets led early but couldn't hold on to the lead. It took uh, Morgan State a while to, to kind of knock off the ring rust. But once they did, they opened this game up a little bit. And the Hornets are going to have to try to catch up here. Stan Woodham is going into a man-to-man -man after that timeout. Malik Miller working with Lagio Granson. Nice pass on the move to the basket, but the shot missed by Seventh Woods. He got too far underneath, had to turn around and try to lay up, and just uh, wasn't ready for that move. He wanted to take it on the way to the basket. There's Miles Carter working inside. His shot block will have a jump ball as Chris Sodom finally came up with it. And the possession goes to Morgan State. Got him. Sodom complaining that somebody hit him on the bridge of the nose. I didn't see anybody get their arms up that high. Nobody was near him, but <laughs> he needs to control it. Yeah. Dale State has to be ready for the back door. Coach Broda is coming out of the Georgetown and Maryland area. They run a lot of back door, and they're playing against a man-to-man -man offense. Granson over on the left offense. side to Devonish. Devonish over to the right side to Moore. Moore in the middle. Granson at the top of the key alone. Nobody came out to challenge. He said, I'll shoot it. That was in and just about falling down. And somehow it spun back out. And the Hornets got the rebound. Carter now sends it out to Perkins at center court. Inside two minutes left in the half. Perkins goes to Carter now on the left side. Back out to Perkins to Fregala. He'll go to the right side to Carter as Carter went around. The ball knocked out of Carter's hand by 7th Woods. Carter got it back. Three seconds on the shot clock. The Hornets lose it as that's a forced turnover. Morgan State doing well on defense. Making the Hornets run the shot clock down and then as Carter looked up to make a shot, the ball slapped away out of his hand. Now Devonish works to Moore top of the key. Moore goes cross court almost out of the reach of Malik Miller, but he saved it from going out of bounds. Into the middle to Seventh Woods. Now on the right side to Moore. Moore feeds inside to Miller. Miller backing in on Corey Perkins. Perkins there though to keep him from getting too far inside. The shot missed. Sodom on the rebound. Nobody wanted to get close the way he was swinging those elbows. Mm -mm. Those were lethal. <laughs> Perkins will bring it down now on the left side. Give it off to Fergala. Less than a minute left in the first half. The Hornets down by 13 for Gallo with a little bit of a dribbling show. Puts it up and it gets stuck between the backboard and the rim on the left side. For Gallo saying, you know, I got fouled in there. Pleading his case to the official. He won't get the call now. He's hoping to get it later. Seems like the seniors are starting to really take a hold of senior night, knowing it's their last chance. But they need to get a win by passing the ball a little bit more instead of going one-on-one. -on -one. They'll reset the shot clock to 20 seconds now. Oh, no, they, they drop it down to six seconds. That's where it was. Now, how can you say the ball didn't hit the rim? It was stuck between the backboard and the rim. It's a jump ball situation. Yep. And the, get stuck. the inbound pass stolen by Morgan State. And as they steal it, then they call a timeout with 37.6 seconds left in the first half. So we'll be back with you uh, here on HSRN with Delaware State Basketball on Monday night from Coppin State. First game is at 5.30 from Baltimore. That's the women, followed by the men. And the women thought they had one today. Forced overtime against Morgan State, but couldn't win it in the last five-minute period. Played 45 good minutes of basketball, but see what they can do at Coppin State Monday night. We'll have the men 30 minutes after the women's game. Then next Thursday night, we'll finish up the regular season south of here down at University of Maryland Eastern Shore in Princess Anne against UMES. And then the MEAC tournament begins the following week in Norfolk Runs the 9th through the 12th. And we'll be there with not only Delaware State basketball, but Morgan State as well from the MEAC tournament. Top in the Morgan State. Granson gives it off on the right side to Devonish. Devonish goes left side. Now to Miller. 
14 seconds on the shot clock. There's about an eight second difference between game clock and shot clock. Miller into the paint, puts it up. He's fouled on the way in. Just want to see who it is. It's Christopher Smith. That's two for him. Eight team fouls here on Delaware State in this first half. Stops the clock, 16.8 seconds left in the half. Miller at the line again. Just his 13th game of the season. Rolls that one around, it won't fall. Hornets will send Smith to the bench. Zach Kent comes in. DeMarco Balkum also into the game for Delaware State, and Chris Sodom gets a breather. So his halftime break will be 16.8 seconds longer than teammates. Miller's second shot is good. He's the leading scorer now with 10 points. 13, uh, 33 to 19. Long pass in. Corey Perkins gets around the defense. Zach Kent waiting underneath. Went up for the dunk. Contact made from behind. It'll be a foul on Morgan State, sending Zach Kent to the line. It's good that Zach Kent went up strong, but it should be an and one right now, Gary. Trevor Moore on the foul. Zach Kent, a good shooter, but having trouble from the line on the season, just 35%. But he could, the Hornets could use two points here. Miss the first. Zach Kent needs to make this shot for Delaware State. They need all the points they can get. And when the clock isn't running, it's especially important to make them. Gets the second one to go. His first point of the game, 33 to 20. Morgan State with a timeout here, stopping the clock. 12.8 seconds left in the half. Zach Kent playing his last home game along with seven to six of his teammates. Kent on the DSU Dean's list with Fahim Jamedo. That means they had a grade point average between 3.25 and 3.99. Well, right now I can say that hopefully for Dell State, they understand how they got to where they are by competing each and every time up and down the floor. Just seems like right now, again, like I said, sometimes senior night can be a bad thing when you know it's your last time here. Seniors are trying to get all the shots they can get up. But now they really got to settle down and, and try to go into halftime, hoping that they can come back out the second half and put a real dent in this score. Morgan will have the ball here. No shot clock, 12.8 to go in the half. And they inbound it successfully. Hornets contesting here, but having to come back quickly on defense as the passes went down court. Devonish sends it inside, shot missed, and there's the buzzer to end the first half. And they'll go to the locker room. The Hornets down by 13 after leading at one point by as many as six. 33-20, Morgan State leading here at the half. We're going to send it to the studio and be back shortly. Second half coming your way. Putting the UNHBCU, we are HSRN.
Hey, Hornet fans, please remember that our friends at the Microtel Inn and Suites in Dover on Route 10 near Dover Air Force Base are here to help you with your hotel needs at a discounted rate. Call them at 302-674-3800 or go online at the Delaware State University Hornets page to set up a reservation for a clean and comfortable night. It's your boy, Chef JJ. It's your boy, Chef Gamble. And we are the Good Brothers LLC, your official game day sponsors for DSU Athletics. The Good Brothers, proud alumni of Delaware State University and an even prouder sponsor of DSU Athletics. Follow them on Instagram at The Good Brothers LLC. Chef JJ and Chef Gamble are proud to bring you a unique meal each week with a variety of combinations and tastes from the Caribbean. It's a bite you won't regret. Why choose Del One? One out of every 11 Delaware residents is a part of the Del One family. Rooted in Delaware, community driven, Del One strives to be an active part of Delaware neighborhoods and organizations. To this day, the Del One Foundation has raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for countless local charities, and our commitment continues. Choose Del One, and let's grow together. Hornet fans, be sure to stop at your local Grotto's for a great meal and a legendary taste. Grotto's Pizza, the official pizza partner of DSU Athletics. Taste the uniqueness of our first-generation German bakery in Delhi, the new Bavarian bakery in Delhi in Dover. Authentic, original creations are made fresh from scratch every day. Enjoy one of our great pastries and signature cakes. Don't forget to bring home our house-made breads, Bavarian rye, sourdough, and fresh sandwich rolls. At our deli, choose from 14 different breads. You deserve only the best. The new Bavarian bakery in Delhi in Dover. Get your local farm-raised meats at TA Farms, a fifth-generation family-owned and operated farm right here in Wyoming, Delaware. Open year-round offering beef, turkey, chicken, pork, and lamb. Call 302-492-3030 or check them out at www.tafarms.com. Whether you want to buy or sell a house in Delaware or anywhere, Call the Delaware Homegirls Felicia Duggins, a proud two-time DSU graduate and corporate sponsor. Before you buy, sell, or invest, call the Hornets Choice to help you find your right nest. Hey Hornets, DSU Athletics is excited to announce that we have launched our new app for all sports teams and events. Stay tuned for live game stats, giveaways, and highlights all at your fingertips, located in the App Store. You don't want to miss out on the true game day experience. Taste the uniqueness of our first-generation German bakery in Delhi, the new Bavarian bakery in Delhi in Dover. Authentic, original creations are made fresh from scratch every day. Enjoy one of our great pastries and signature cakes. Don't forget to bring home our house-made breads, Bavarian rye, sourdough, and fresh sandwich rolls. At our deli, choose from 14 different breads. You deserve only the best. The new Bavarian bakery in Delhi in Dover. Hey, Hornet fans, please remember that our friends at the Microtel Inn and Suites in Dover on Route 10 near Dover Air Force Base are here to help you with your hotel needs at a discounted rate. Call them at 302-674-3800 or go online at the Delaware State University Hornets page to set up a reservation for a clean and comfortable night. Hi, I'm Scott Kammerer, president of Sodell Concepts, the best restaurant group in the state, and we're inviting you to come join our team. Soto Concepts is a growing hospitality company with 16 restaurants and a variety of other hospitality businesses, all located in beautiful Southern Delaware. We have recently added many departments to our executive leadership team, including a training department, a property development department, and a construction department. We invite you to come live at the beach and work with a growing restaurant group with many opportunities to advance your career. Soto Concepts Restaurant Group, come check us out. Get your local farm-raised meats at TA Farms, a fifth-generation family-owned and operated farm right here in Wyoming, Delaware. Open year-round offering beef, turkey, chicken, pork, and lamb. Call 
or check them out at www.tafarms.com. Hello, I'm Kimberly Holmes, Stroke Clinical Nurse Specialist at Bay Health, Chair of the Delaware Stroke System of Care Committee, and Board President of the Delaware American Heart and Stroke Association. I am also a proud DSU alumna. Stroke disproportionately affects African Americans. I am driven to educate my community regarding the prevention and or control of risk factors such as high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and obesity. I'm Kimberly Holmes and I'm here for our Hornets. It's your boy Chef JJ. It's your boy Chef Gamble. And, and we are the Good Brothers LLC, your official game day sponsors for DSU Athletics. Why choose Del One? Del One is rooted in Delaware and here to cover you through your financial journey. From your first account, auto loan, or rewards credit card, buying a home or starting a business, investing, planning for retirement, and then enjoying it. Get what you need, when you need it. Del One has you covered. Choose Del One and let's grow together. Calling all Hornets fans. Be sure to follow Bay Health on social media. Find us on Facebook at Bay Health, on Twitter at Bay Health DE, on Instagram at Bay Health. You can find us on TikTok and on LinkedIn. Bay Health, we're here for our Hornets. It's your boy, Chef JJ. It's your boy, Chef Gamble. And we are the Good Brothers LLC, your official game day sponsors for DSU Athletics. Hi, I'm Scott Cameron, president of the Sodell Concepts, the best restaurant group in the state, and we're inviting you to come join our team. Sodell Concepts is a growing hospitality company with 16 restaurants and a variety of other hospitality businesses, all located in beautiful Southern Delaware. We have recently added many departments to our executive leadership team, including a training department, a property development department, and a construction department. We invite you to come live at the beach and work with a growing restaurant group with many opportunities to advance your career. Settle Concepts Restaurant Group, come check us out. Hello, I'm Kimberly Holmes, Stroke Clinical Nurse Specialist at Bay Health chair of the Delaware Stroke System of Care Committee and board president of the Delaware American Heart and Stroke Association. I am also a proud DSU alumna. Stroke disproportionately affects African Americans. I am driven to educate my community regarding the prevention and or control of risk factors such as high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and obesity. I'm Kimberly Holmes and I'm here for our Hornets. Whether you want to buy or sell a house in Delaware or anywhere, call the Delaware Homegirls Felicia Duggins, a proud two-time DSU graduate and corporate sponsor. Before you buy, sell, or invest, call the Horns Choice to help you find your right nest. Dr. Verdi and I'm here for our Hornets. Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Mosley and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Dr. Sam Ginder and I'm here for our Hornets. Hi, I'm Dr. Rudy and I'm here for our Hornets. 
Hi, I'm Dr. Melissa Ann Eppinger, and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Dr. Samuels, and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Dr. Kendall Barton, and I'm here for our Hornets. Hi, I'm Dr. Justine Chowdhury, and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Dr. Vasagar, and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Sue Chafin, and I'm here for our Hornets. Hornet fans, be sure to stop at your local Grotto's for a great meal and a legendary taste. Grotto's Pizza, the official pizza partner of DSU Athletics. I'm Dr. Verdi and I'm here for our Hornets. Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Mosley and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Dr. Sam Ginder and I'm here for our Hornets. Hi, I'm Dr. Rudy and I'm here for our Hornets. Hi, I'm Dr. Melissa Ann Eppinger and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Dr. Samuels and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Dr. Kendall Barton and I'm here for our Hornets. Hi, I'm Dr. Justine Chowdhury, and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Dr. Vasagar, and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Sue Chafin, and I'm here for our Hornets. Dell State plays the zone, packs it in, hits the defensive glass. They got a shot at chopping into this 13-point lead. Right now, Miles Carter unofficially the leading scorer in the game with 13 points for Delaware State. Malik Miller has 10 for Morgan State. And then it's spread around among a bunch of other people. Nobody in foul trouble, a bunch of players with two fouls each as we enter the final 20, uh, 40 minutes. 20 minutes of the game. What do we got? We got 20. 20. We got 20. Yeah. Hopefully it's only 20. <laughs> you know, we thought we yeah, were going to get 40 in the first game. I, I'd take an extra five if that means we're going into overtime with Dell State making a run. That would be great. They had overtime on uh, Saturday, a week ago, in the game against North Carolina Central. Yeah. Just yeah. Uh, And that was after they had a lead. Mm-hmm. And North Carolina Central, I think, hit a three uh, hit a late three. in the game with about three seconds left and, and uh, sent it to overtime. Yeah, it was questionable. Stan Woodman had to choose whether or not he wanted to foul and send him to the line or just let the play go on. Made his choice and sent it to overtime. But yeah, so we're getting ready now for the second half to begin. Morgan State will have the ball. Malik Miller standing directly in front of us at center court to inbound the ball for the Bears. Hornets will have Martez Robinson, Chris uh, Sodom, Zach Kent, DeMarco Balkum, and Miles Carter on the floor to start the second half. Yeah, he gets it into Devonish, and uh, the clock did not start when it should have, so the officials blow the whistle and stop play. Similar thing happened in the women's game. Oddly enough, they took put four seconds or took four seconds off the game clock and only three off the shot clock. Huh. <laughs> Nobody caught that they didn't match them up. I don't see why they just don't inbound it again. Well, they're going to have to inbound it again, but they're going to have to. Uh, but, uh, they're going to take five seconds off the game clock. Now they should take the shot clock to 25, and they did. Boy, referees must have a little better math. <laughs> now, five seconds is easy to figure. It was that uh, discrepancy of a second in, in that game, the women's game, that kind of confused me. Oh. 
shot clock and the game clock should match up on time off. To get it in, it'll be Devonish in front of his bench with the ball for Morgan State. He'll cross to the left side, give it off to Malik Miller. Miller sends it out into the middle. They'll work it into Devonish. He'll work right side of the lane, try to put it up, and Chris Sodom was there to block it. And then as the ball got loose, there was a scrap for it, and it will be a foul on Martez Robinson for Delaware State. And they're going to say Chad Venning was in the act of shooting, so he'll go to the line here to shoot two. Got that one up high and got it to Gwynn. His first basket of any kind of the game. Venning scored three points against Delaware State back on January 30th when the two teams previously met. Got the second one to go as well to make it 35-20. 15 point lead for Morgan State. And the ball knocked away in the back court by Morgan State. It will be Delaware State ball. And another now a, with another clock. problem with the, with the clock. It didn't start right away. So now they're gonna have to figure out how to make the adjustment, and I guess they did. The one official over by the scorer's table saying, don't start yet. For one, I'm out of position. For two, we gotta get this right. So, 23 seconds on the shot clock for Delaware State. Zach Kent looking to get it into a teammate. Long pass into DeMarco Balkum in the backcourt. And he'll try to round, come around Trevor Moore. Moore goes to slap it away. And he does, but it's off of DeMarco Balkum out of bounds. Not Bears a ball. Start. Not a good start at all for Dale State coming out <laughs> after that halftime. No. Commit a foul, give up two points from the foul line, and then they can't get the ball on a decent inbound. Morgan State gets it in. Devonish passes it off to Malik Miller. Now over to Trevor Moore. Leaves it off for Venning. Moore wants three, puts it up and in. And just kind of struts off after that too. 38-20, 18 point lead for Morgan State. Carter on a breakaway. Goes in, Venning slaps around to keep Carter from making his shot. But Carter didn't take the shot. He held on to it, then put it up. But Venning committed his second personal foul, and Miles Carter will go to the line to shoot. There's a lot of time left in the game, Gary, but I like to see a different body language from Dell State. They look like the game is already over, and it's not. They got plenty of time to put a dent in this lead that, Del that uh, Morgan State has. Carter just put a little bit of a dent in it with that first shot. Second in the MEAC in scoring, 16.1 points per game. He has 15 right now after the second shot went in. Down by 16. 38-22. Moore goes over to Venning. Now back to Moore on the left side. He'll go to the baseline. Step to the left side of the foul lane. Pass it off. Now back to Moore from the left side. Missing Morgan State. Trying for the rebound, and we're going to have a whistle and a foul. This one, I think, could be on DeMarco Balkum. It is. He now has two on the game. Second team foul on Delaware State. Let me correct something. I said Miles Carter second in the MEAC in scoring. He's third in the, in the conference. Leads the MEAC in one category. That's minutes per game. 34 minutes he plays out of 40. They'll take it inside. Seventh Woods works around underneath. There you go. Ball comes loose. Hornets get it. Corey Perkins lead pass down to Miles Carter. And as he dribbles to try to go inside, the ball locked away. And touch last by Carter off of his foot. It'll be Bears ball. So even when the Hornets make a steal, they can't convert it and go down court cleanly. Ronald Lucas and Dominic Fergala come into the game for Delaware State. DeMarco Balkum stepping out. A little bit more perimeter shooting. Zach Kent also went to the bench. 
The pass comes in to Woods, and Woods takes it end to end and gets two. Just his second basket of the day. 40 to 22, 18 point lead. Morgan State trying to get a good win here today. Here's Lucas. He'll drive in along the baseline. We're going to have a foul on Morgan State as the defender stepped in front of Ronald Lucas. Woods. Seventh Woods getting his second personal foul. Ivanish comes back in. Trevor Moore goes out. He's been in the thorn of the Hornet's side all day here today. Inbound goes to Chris Sodom, sends it out to Corey Perkins on the right side. Perkins looks, moves around to the left, now drives into the paint, and he gets fouled. He wasn't going to get a successful shot there, but he did draw the foul. Good, strong, aggressive move by Corey Perkins off of that, cur that screen. Now Venning picking up his third personal with 17.50 left in the game. Corey Perkins to the line. Had a lot of playing time early in the season. Actually started 12 games in the early part of the season when the Hornets had a lot of guys out with injuries. But when they started coming back, Corey Perkins' playing time was reduced a bit. He's a freshman. He's going to get plenty of time here under his old high school coach, Stan Waterman. Hit the first of two from the line, but missed the second. 40-23 now the score, 17-point difference. Devonish gives it off to Granson. Granson gives it back to Devonish on the right side. He comes around top of the key, drives right side of the lane, pulls back out. Goes inside to Granson, now back to Devonish. Baseline move and goes over top and gets it. 42-23. And a steal. The pressure again. And Another a steal. Turnover. A steal inside and a whistle, and I'm not sure if it's a foul or yeah. he stepped out. Yeah, it's going to be a foul, and it's going to be on Ronald Lucas. His first. He'll, he'll commit a few in a game. Ronald Lucas, Lucas does not leave with a clean slate any <laughs> game. His aggressive style of play works sometimes right there. It gave uh, Morgan State a chance to have the shot clock reset to 20 seconds. 17-17 to go in the contest. Now they're going to take, they're looking at the replay, and, and the only thing I can figure is they're looking to see if maybe Devonish went out of bounds with the ball along the baseline. And I think Stan Waterman asked him to take a second look. He could have, but I, I don't know if that's reviewable necessarily unless they're trying to check time and foul. But it, but that's what it looked like. It looked like Lucas on the foul after a turnover by uh, Corey Perkins. So now the officials are taking a look. At the end of the game, we're going to give you the name of the 10 Alarm Fire Player of the Game presented by the Little Creek Fire Company. They want to be with us for that. The official sponsors of HSRN are American Spirit, Federal Credit Union, Symphony Potato Chips, Fred Drake Automotive, B2L29 Premium Alkaline Water, America's Mortgage Coach John Millett, the Alley Group Insurance Agency, and the Little Creek Fire Company. And as they would say on a football field, after review, the play stands as called. <laughs> Devonish inbounds, long pass in to Isaiah Burke. Burke gives it off now on the right side to Devonish. Out to Burke in the middle, to Woods on the left, back to Burke, and then to Devonish. Tried to get a fancy dribble around. Corey Perkins took it away. Dominic Fregala pulled up in the foul circle to take a jumper, and he got really bumped hard from behind, knocking him down. Ball nowhere close to the basket, but it's going to send going to send for Gala to the foul line. Granson called for the foul. Fourth team foul here in the second half. Let's hope the Hornets can put some points on the board right here. And they need Dominic for Gala to find the way here. If he can get hot, they can get going, and he gets his first point of the game at the foul line. 
But no matter how he gets it, once he turns it loose, it can off, oftentimes mean the, the dam is broken and the tap is open. All shooters like to see that look, Gary, when it goes through the rim. Got both from the line. And again, when you're scoring and the clock's not running and you're behind by 17, that's a good thing. Yes, it is. Now, out in the middle, Carter really working on Woods. Woods finally gets loose, gives it to Granson. They send it inside underneath Malik Miller. Good down the way into the lane. By Miller. Yep. 44-25, back to a 19-point lead for Morgan State. They contested in the backcourt on Corey Perkins. Double up him on the sideline. Some confusion there between Perkins and Ronald Lucas. Corey's got to know you can't turn your back to the defense when you got the ball like that going against a press. Not in front of the other team's bench, and you're right up against the sideline. A turnover to Morgan State again. 16 and a half to go. Devonish passing it across. It's going to be out of bounds, but touched by Delaware State. Morgan State will keep it. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Miller to inbound the ball. Seventh Woods goes out. The Torian Ware comes in for Morgan State. They get it in nicely to Devonish. Burke brings it around to the middle, sends it right side to Ware. They work it inside. Now back out to Ware. Now Devonish and underneath to Miller. Miller's shot missed, but Granson was there for the putback. 46-25. Bergala coming around the defenders, sends it left side to Carter. Carter pulls up. He wants three. He got it. That was a good way. They broke the press. They finally got a decent shot. Points on the board. And it's 46-28. Hornets down by 11 after that shot. They only gave him two on that. I thought it was a three. 46-27. So Carter now with 17 points on the game. Shot for three, missing for Morgan State. Ronald Lucas going in there to try to get the rebound. Simultaneous possession and the possession arrow pointing to the Hornets. We'll stop the clock with 15-21 left in the game. Morgan State 46, Delaware State 27. Putting the UNHBCU, we're HSRN. I think they might hey, Hornet fans, there. please remember that our friends at the Microtel Inn and Suites in Dover on Route 10 near Dover Air Force Base are here to help you with your hotel needs at a discounted rate. Call them at 302-674-3800 or go online at the Delaware State University Hornets page to set up a reservation for a clean and comfortable night. It's your boy, Chef JJ. It's your boy, Chef Gamble. And we are the Good Brothers LLC, your official game day sponsors for DSU Athletics. with reduced size crowds and no crowds at all for some games. The energy that's in here, the team has to feed off of it. I know how we feel sitting courtside. It makes a difference. It's almost like otherwise, it's just like a practice. Hornets work it down. Perkins into the lane, lost the ball, knocked out of his hand. Where? Leaves it off to Devonish. Devonish with a jumper for three, missing. 
Robinson there for the loose ball for the Hornets. Carter, one on two, gets bumped as he goes in for the layup. Doesn't bother Miles Carter as he goes ahead and puts it in anyway. Need to make a run here, Gary. I was expecting a call there on that bump as Carter went in. 46-29. 14-45 still to go. Devonish steps in and a short six-foot jumper. No trouble on that. 48-29. Got to do a better job guarding. Keep the guy in front of you. Martez Robinson, they double up on him in the back. Cordy gets it off to Carter. Carter just outruns his defender. He has a different level than most of the other players on the floor. Yeah, he has a gear. Fast and faster. Quick and fast and sudden. So all of a sudden, he wants to go for three there. Rolls it around the rim, and it comes out to Malik Miller. So Morgan State gets the rebound on that miss by Miles Carter, and he doesn't miss a lot. Devonish now to the left side. Carter comes in, tries to bat the ball away, doesn't. And from the corner, it's Isaiah Burke for three. That makes it 51-29, and it's starting to get really away from Delaware State, down by 22 with 13.40 to go. Carter now, spin move, right in front of the foul line, gets the shot to go. And a foul. Are they going to wave off that shot? Nope. No. The shot counts, but Ronald Lucas gets called for the foul. 51-31. Now a 20-point lead for Morgan State. And Miles Carter, I have him at 22 points on the game. Not even close to the end. Burke now right side guarded by Fregala. Over to Granson, top of the key. Branson goes right side to Trevor Moore. Now back to Miller. He'll step out on the right side. Ball tapped away from him. Good move by Corey Perkins to tie out and knock the ball away. Gets the loose ball, brings it all the way down. Goes for the layup underneath, gets fouled. Corey should have went right up with his left hand. Instead, he went to the right side, tried to reverse it. He could have had an and one, but Hopefully he'll get them two back right here at the foul line. As Isaiah Burke called for the foul, Perkins from the line, 73, two and a half percent on the year. That one hits off the front of the rim, goes back off the backboard and in. See what Perkins can do with this one. Perkins, another one of those players on this team on the Dean's list as he hits the second shot. The freshman, his father is one of the assistant coaches, so he really has to toe the line. <laughs> there it is. Turnover. They need a few of those with 13.01 left. Down by 18. Traveling called on Morgan State. Perkins in the backcourt takes the inbound pass from Carter. Carter now, Perkins trying to get across the center line and does so, guarded by Burke. And a bat uh, with an ankle breaker by Perkins, and, and then a three-pointer. And scores it. The crowd's coming alive here, Gary. Hopefully they can make a run here. 51-36. Perkins with one of those moves that left the defender sliding down on the floor. And then stepped back and got the three. Underneath, Granson trying for the basket. Got fouled. Ronald Lucas, that's his third. He and Martez Robinson each have three. It'll send Granson to the line. And Granson gets the first one to go. Sixteen-point lead now, 52-36. Granson to shoot the second one. And that one hits off the front of the rim, goes back, and then off the side. Martez Robinson gets the rebound for Delaware State. So Morgan State comes away with only one on that foul. 
Now Carter goes through traffic, goes underneath. Shot missed. Ronald Lucas was there for the follow-up, and he dunked it. Good hustle by Lucas on that play. Right there to get the loose ball. 50, just followed the same path in. 52 to 38. Granson with a spin move underneath. Rolls it off the rim on the other side. Martez Robinson there for the loose ball. Sends it out to Dominic Fregala. Left side now. Corey Perkins. Check that Robinson. Robinson goes in. Takes a shot. It misses. Ball goes out of bounds. And they're going to say it was touched last by Morgan State. As Martez Robinson helps up Sherman Devonish, who got tied up and fell down underneath of everybody. Timeout. 11.49 left. Morgan State 52. Delaware State 38. Putting you in HBCU. We're HSRN. The Good Brothers, proud alumni of Delaware State University and an even prouder sponsor of DSU Athletics. Follow them on Instagram at The Good Brothers LLC. Chef JJ and Chef Gamble are proud to bring you a unique meal each week with a variety of combinations and tastes from the Caribbean. It's a bite you won't regret. Why choose Del One? One out of every 11 Delaware residents is a part of the Del One family. Rooted in Delaware, community driven, Del One strives to be an active part of Delaware neighborhoods and organizations. To this day, the Del One Foundation has raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for countless local charities, and our commitment continues. Choose Del One, and let's grow together. Hornet fans, be sure to stop at your local grottos for a great meal and a legendary taste. Grotto's Pizza, the official pizza partner of DSU Athletics. Compete, compete, compete. Get it into Fregala, looking for three. You got it. Is. Oh, man, if he gets hot here, it's going to be really fun. 52-31, an 11-point difference. Another turnover by Morgan State. Hornets on the attack. Miles Carter here got he comes. it. 52-43. This is the Dell State we were waiting to see. Five points now in the last 30 seconds. Long pass down in the left corner to Detorian Ware. Another Hilt steal. Comes inside and it's taken away. Carter works inside. Turn around. Jumper got it. Yeah, buddy. Morgan State just called timeout, didn't they? Yes, <laughs> seven Coach points. Brothers doesn't have any answer for that. Gave up seven points in the less than a minute. And the Hornets are down only by seven now, 52 to 45, with 11.09 left on the clock. One thing Morgan State can't prepare for is that will to win. And Dell State now is back the way they used to be. They're only down by seven now with plenty of time, plenty of time. And Uncle Mo entered the building, and Uncle Mo is on Delaware State side right now. Momentum going to the Hornets. When it for breaks, tune-ups, or realignments, just trust the duck. That's Fred Drake Automotive, 302-378-4877. Morgan State wanted to break up that momentum there with that timeout, but see if the Hornets can come back out with it. Miles Carter really opened it up in there. A three-pointer and a couple of twos. Yeah. Well, it was it was Dominic Fregala who hit the three. And they're hoping to get the ball to him and have him open it up here. When Dominic Fregala is hot, good things can happen for Delaware State. Yeah. Their defense is going to be their offense right here, it looks like. A couple of turnovers turned into easy buckets for Dale State. So it'll be Morgan State ball as we come back now. After the basket by Miles Carter. And the Hornets just out hustled Morgan State in that last minute. They get it into Malik Miller. He comes, had to go up high to take the pass, came down. Touchdown. And, yep. 
Touched it with his foot as he came down. Oh, Martez Robinson going to get called for a foul. That gives him four. Robinson's going to stay on the floor. Coach Waterman just indicated to him now, think, because you've got four fouls, holding up four fingers. Reminding Robinson he's got to be smart out there. Devonish now takes it. They go inside. Shot missed by Morgan State. Robinson rebounds. Sends it down to Fregala on the left side. Dominic looking for some help here. The defender, Devonish, right in his face. Fregala finds Martez Robinson underneath. He got bumped. The ball went. A scrap for the ball. And Robinson was bumped and knocked into the Hornets bench area where the chairs are set up there. Fortunately, there are a bunch of teammates there who helped to cushion the foul or the fall. I can see Coach Witterman is asking for a little bit of excessive foul there because it was a little extra. He already had the foul, but it was a little extra to push him over into the bench. Yep. Granson called for the foul. Hornets will inbound it here with 10.40 to go. Into Ronald Lucas. Off to Miles Carter. He couldn't control it. But we're going to have a foul on Morgan State. Chad Venning. That's his fourth. Seventh on the team here. So the Hornets will go into the bonus with Miles Carter at the line. Who else do you want at the line? Miles Carter. Senior leadership. Here we go. Graduate student leadership. Here is a seven, seven point game. He could take it down to five. Make it a two possession game. That's the guy you want out there shooting right now. Shooting one and one. Miles. Going to shoot a one and one. If he makes the first, he gets a second one. He made the first. Made it look easy. Carter at the line to shoot the second. And unofficially, by my count, he now has a new season high of 28 after making those two. Here we go. And we have a timeout. As the Hornets have, the Hornets have pulled within five. We're going to take the break here. 10.37 left. It's Morgan State, 52, Delaware State, 47, putting the U in HBCU. We're HSRN. Calling all Hornets fans. Be sure to follow Bay Health on social media. Find us on Facebook at Bay Health, on Twitter at Bay Health DE, on Instagram at Bay Health. You can find us on TikTok and on LinkedIn. Bay Health, we're here for our Hornets. Hey, Hornet fans, please remember that our friends at the Microtel Inn and Suites in Dover on Route 10 near Dover Air Force Base are here to help you with your hotel needs at a discounted rate. Call them at 302-674-3800 or go online at the Delaware State University Hornets page. Devonish working with Woods back over to Devonish on the right side. They'll send it down inside to Chad Venning. Venning. Trying to work to the lane, goes over top of Lucas. The ball missing everything on the way up and then touched by Miller and out of bounds. Hornets get it now. Israel Palmer had gotten into the game there for a moment for Delaware State. Ron Lucas will come back in. Martez is back on the floor for him. Offense for defense, he's got four fouls. Coach doesn't want him to pick up his fifth. That's 
Israel Palmer's first action since January 12th. Lucas underneath, wouldn't go. Ah. Just out of position to get that shot to go. Just a little bit too far inside. And it went up and off the side of the rim. And Morgan State came out with the rebound. Hornets missing an opportunity. Now we have a foul. They're going to get Corey Perkins for reaching in there. That's first foul by Perkins. Seventh team foul. Everybody's shooting from here on out. Yeah, everybody's in the bonus. The officials looked a little confused there for a moment, didn't they? Trying to calm down the players. No Ch one wants to be the first one to lose the Dell State and the MIAC, and they're coming to get people. Chad Benning misses the first of the one and one. It was one and one. Yeah. It was and one the one, and one. But one of the officials blew the whistle, thinking that it was a two shot. And the other officials coming in saying it's a one and one. It's they Dell State's ball. It'll be Hornets' ball. Dell State's ball. A mistake by the official thinking it was a two shot when it was a one and one. Hornets got the loose ball and started down court, and the whistle blew. And the other official came in and made the correction. And the third official was down at the other end of the court. Hornets get it in. Robinson gets tripped up as he comes out with it. And Devonish picks it up and puts it in to make it 54-47. Could have had a call there as Carter was tripped coming out, or Robinson was tripped coming out. Carter telling Corey Perkins, don't stand there in the middle because that's where I'm coming to. Carter now works to the right side. Pulls up, wants three. Miles Carter with three. Woo! That was a big shot, big shot. A turnover, oh! 54 near turnover. near turnover. Burke saved it, now pass, Here bad pass. Carter off the backboard and in. You gotta do it by yourself, do it by yourself, Miles. 54, 52. Hornets down within two. Ron Lucas with a block, but he's going to be called for a foul. As Isaiah Burke comes in. Lucas now with four. That'll be the team's eighth foul. 8.57 left in the game. Burke goes to the line. Just about everybody who's been in the game has gotten to go to the foul line today. He had 12 points against Delaware State when they met earlier in the season at the end of January. And he has nine against the Hornet. Hornets here now, 55-52. But the Hornets have fought their way back into this thing, maybe when some of the fans who were here thinking, Oh, this one really got away from us. It sure did. Now they're fighting like they've been doing all season long. Second shot missed. Follow up by Morgan State. Missed, but uh, Malik Miller getting a second opportunity on the rebound. Makes it go 57-52. Back to a five-point lead. That was good for a three-point play for Morgan State. Here's Corey Perkins along the baseline. They hold him up for Gallup from the corner. Off the rim. Won't go. And it's Granson on the rebound. Gala just an inch off the mark. They go inside off the pan, off the glass. It's Miller, who I have at 16 points for Morgan State, 59-52. Hornets were within two. Now they're down by seven in the backcourt. And Morgan State trying to tie them up. They clear it out. Perkins cross court. Martez Robinson. Can you tell Big from shot. the reaction? Big shot. His first field goal of the day. Makes it 59-55. Robinson had hit three from the foul line. That's it for Lucas. Ronald Lucas now just fouled out of the game with 8.05 left, his last game here at Memorial Hall. That's a tough way to finish your final home game, fouling out with eight minutes left. Well, he's giving it with all he has, so 
Yeah. He shouldn't have any regrets when he walks off the floor. They still have two games left. Monday night at Coppin State. Next Thursday at UMES. We'll be there for them. Now the official making sure that all the officials know this is a one and one. <laughs> Don't want any confusion here. Devonish. Hesitated on his shot for Gala almost could have been called for a loan violation there. He started to move in and just went down to his fingers to keep from being called on the violation in case Devonish missed, but he didn't. And he hits the second one as well. Six point game now. 61 55. Still in it. Two possession game. It is. Yeah. And, and a lot of time at 8 04. Now Perkins will come down slowly across center court. Works to the right side. Zach Kent came into the game when Lucas went out. Perkins tried Good to shot. force a shot up. They made him go to the outside. It went off the side of the backboard, came down to Morgan State. Now Miller gives it off to Woods. Woods will bring it down slowly at center court at the logo. Goes to the right side. Seventh Woods. Left side now to Devonish and a whistle as we have contact and action away from the ball. And it's going to send Granson to the line. Zach Kent comes into the game and commits the foul. And we'll get a timeout here with 7.32 left. It's a six-point lead for Morgan State, 61-55. Putting the U and HBCU, we're HSRN. Hornet fans, be sure to stop at your local Grotto's for a great meal and a legendary taste. Grotto's Pizza, the official pizza partner of DSU Athletics. The Good Brothers, proud alumni of Delaware State University and an even prouder sponsor of DSU Athletics. Follow them on Instagram at The Good Brothers LLC. Chef JJ and Chef Gamble are proud to bring you a unique meal each week with a variety of combinations and tastes from the Caribbean. It's a bite you won't regret. Help you to uh, go through the quicksand of trying to get a mortgage. And that can take a while. And there's a lot of pitfalls, a lot of uh, requests for more information. John Millette will help you through it. 866-409-9000. Morgan State with the ball in a six-point lead. 7.32 left. Baggio Granson from the Netherlands. A senior. Started his uh, collegiate career playing at Northwest College. Played one season there for the Trappers. That's a junior college team. And he just put in that foul shot. Dale State's been having a little bit of trouble with this pressure. So hopefully now with him missing that shot, they'll be able to bring the ball up court. Run something good and get a great shot. Bears with a seven point lead and 725 left to play. Miles Carter putting on a clinic here. Drops it off behind the back pass. Dominic Fregala shot for three from the top of the key. Missing. Granson gets it. That was a hurried shot there. He could have got something maybe a little better. Might have set himself. Took the pass behind the back pass by Carter. And now they have a charge. They're going to get Malik Miller as he tried to go inside, and Dominic Fergala had closed off the lane. That's first uh, personal for Miller, but it's the team's eighth. Delaware State with 10 here in the second half. Both teams are in the bonus. They get it in to Martez Robinson. Tripped up a little bit as he came down, got his footing. They go right side for Gala ah. off the rim. Will go. Grant's in there to get the loose ball before it goes out of bounds and feeds it off to Devonish. Those are good shots for him. They're just not falling. And usually he drops them in with ease. We'll go right side now to Trevor Moore. Moore 
gives it off to Granson. Moore for three. Too strong. Way off. Yeah, air ball. And I think kept it from being a pure air ball was it did kiss the glass on the way down. Dale State really needs a basket right here. See what Corey Perkins is able to set up here offensively for the Hornets as he works inside. Now comes back out, goes to Fregala in front of the bench. On the left. Dominic looking inside. Seven seconds on the shot clock. He'll drive inside, go for the layup. Good he shot. got it. Good patience. Good patience by Dominic Fregala right there. 62-57. Hornets now within five. Devonish on the right side. Inside, underneath. And that's Miller who leads the scoring with 18. Dale State fell asleep. Morgan State. 64-57. Back to a seven-point game. Regala pulls up, sends it to Carter on the right side. Carter said, we're going to slow this down here and set up offensively so we can get something out of this possession. Maybe not in all those words. He goes left side, puts up a shot that's deflected. He got fouled. They'll help him off the floor. And He's Vonish. definitely leaving a mark here, Gary, at Dell State. He's not going down. Devonish. He is swinging. Called for the foul. I have Perkins at 33 points on the game. And with 526 left, a chance for more. And Carter makes it more as he hits one from the line there. 64-58. Sodom into the game for the Hornets as Zach Carter goes out. Israel Palmer is going to come back in as Martez Robinson will get a breather. Little offense for defense so he doesn't pick up his fifth foul for Robinson. Yep. Already lost Ronald Lucas for the rest of the game. Carter almost looked like he shot that one off the mark deliberately. Yeah. And a lane violation. He shot that one, and as soon as it left his hand, he was heading to the basket. He knew it was off, but yeah. Almost as if it was deliberate to try to get the rebound and put it in for two more. Lane violation turned it over to Morgan State. It's Miller, right side to Seventh Woods. Back to Miller in the middle. Left side now to Moore. Woods in the middle. And back over to the right side to Devonish. He'll come along the baseline, try to force it in. Gets it off to Granson, and it's good for the basket. 66-58, eight-point game. And we'll have a whistle and a... Wasn't a foul. But the ball will go to Delaware State as they inbound it to Robinson. And the ball... Touched, the official says, by Seventh Woods to make it go out of bounds, deflecting it. Hornets will try it again. But they have to take the ball over to the corner on the side. He's got to stand still this time. Yeah, he can't move along like he did on the baseline. 4.52 still on the clock. The officials consulting to make sure that everybody's on the right page and in agreement. Official called over the scorer's table. They straighten that out. Carter looking to get it in. The ball hit by Miller, knocked back out of bounds. I don't know if Corey sees it, but the way they were set up, if he took off with Sodom standing up top, he would have been wide open. Let's see what Carter is able to do with this one. They get it into Perkins. Perkins goes around the defender, Seventh Woods, comes across center court on the right side. Perkins works to the right side, gives it to Carter in the right corner. Carter looks inside, now makes a move inside. Just in front of the foul line, misses the shot. Chris Sodom goes up for it, and we have a foul on this. Knocked out of bounds off of Sodom's hand. Morgan State's ball. Yep. Still eight point game with plenty of time. 428. Not a, not a hard call to make either because if it was up that high, there was only one player who could have touched it. <laughs> and that was Chris Sodom. 
just under four and a half minutes to go here and an eight point game. Woods across center court working with Devonish. Devonish down on the right side to Trevor Moore. Moore passes it off to Granson. Granson on a reverse layup gets two. 10 point lead now, 68 58. Hornets have got to chip away at it again. And now the Bears coaching staff really upset about, uh, about Seventh Woods. Yeah, so that was a horrible foul. 94 feet away from the basket, and he fouled for Gala. Putting points on the board without the clock running in a 10 point game. Woods' third foul of the game, and it puts Dominic for Gala at the line. He'll shoot two. Dominic Fergala at the foul line averages 85.7%. Well, that'll calm the coaches down since he missed it. Now it looks like a good foul. He's 10th in the MEAC in scoring, averaging 12 points per game, and he gets one there to give him eight on the day, 68-59. Under four minutes now. Quick move down, oh. and a Chris Sodom with a block wow. and a foul, but he didn't let uh, Trevor Moore take it right in and get the, the basket either. Got the body in front. Wow. Sodom's third personal foul takes us to a timeout with 3.56 left on the clock. Morgan State 68, Delaware State 59, putting the U in HBCU. We are HSRN. Hornet fans, be sure to stop at your local Grotto's for a great meal and a legendary taste. Grotto's Pizza, the official pizza partner of DSU Athletics. The Good Brothers, proud alumni of Delaware State University and an even prouder sponsor of DSU Athletics. Follow them on Instagram at The Good Brothers LLC. Chef JJ and Chef Gamble are proud to bring you a unique meal each week with a variety of combinations and tastes from the Caribbean. It's a bite you won't regret. She finished her final home game very strong. And she was not even aware of how many points she scored and that it was a new season high for her. It wasn't until I talked to her after the game and told her. Wow. Well, they're going to have a good a comeback year. Because everybody just about, like you said, everybody's returning. So it won't yeah. be anything unfamiliar for them. Only one senior recognized here today. There were some other seniors along the way, but they, they drifted off of the team somewhere along the way. Trevor Moore hitting that first shot, put Morgan State in front by 10, gets the second, it's an 11 point game. 70 to 59, with plenty of time for Delaware State. Three minutes, 50 seconds left on the clock. Corey Perkins right side to Fergala in the middle, left side now to Robinson. Robinson looks, can't pass anybody, so he says, I'll shoot it, and he hits a three. Big shot by Montez Robinson playing with four fouls. 70 to 62. As he makes it an eight point difference. Bale State's in the man to man now instead of that zone. Granson spin move in Turnover. the lane. Yep. And an outlet pass to Miles Carter. His shot is blocked as he went up. 
And it was still on the way up. It was slapped up against the glass. Morgan State hustle. came away. Good hustle for Morgan State right there. Yeah, and the Hornets just took it a little bit uh, lackadaisical yes. going in, too. Yeah. They thought they had to break away in the easy layup for Carter. Woods goes inside to Granson. He gets tied up by Chris, uh, Chris Sodom. And that's going to be number four on Sodom. That comes with 2.53 left in the game. Zach Kent is going to come in here for Delaware State. Branson at the line. He's had a good day from there. Bounces that one around. It goes back and then falls in. 71-62, nine-point game. Sodom out. Zach Kent in his final home game as well. Hopefully Kent can give them a little something more on the offensive end. And the second shot for Moore goes in. 72-62, we're back to a 10-point difference. Hornets call a timeout as they got tied up on the inbound there. Clock down to two minutes and 50 seconds to go here. And the Hornets using a timeout. That leaves them two. 30-second timeout here. We'll be along with you on Monday afternoon. Women's game at 5.30. The men's game a half an hour after the conclusion of the women's game from Baltimore. I get to head back over to my home city again. Wow. Baltimore seems to be calling me. Two games at the CIAA tournament. We have Morgan State from Baltimore here today, and we go to Coppin State on Monday. Yeah. I'm looking at what, what Morgan State is doing in their press, and they're only trapping on the right side because they know, well, the left side, because Corey is left-handed. And what they're doing is they're allowing him to catch that ball deep in that corner, and then they're sending two people at him. Montez has got to make sure as soon as somebody's open, he gives them the ball. That way they can turn the corner and get it up court, break this press that Morgan State is putting on them, cut into this lead. And I have Perkins at 35 points on the day. About the only way you're going to stop him is put three on him. Carter. Yeah, Carter. Miles Carter really turned it on for his last game at Delaware State Memorial Hall. Not with the team, but in this facility. See, And they'll contest it in the backcourt. Morgan State with a steal. Hornets get it back, though. Martez Robinson hustling. Then he loses it to Isaiah Burke. Nobody letting anybody get away with anything here now. Devonish left side. Feeds it down inside to Granson. Tries to back into the lane against oh, Zach Kent. You know, that ball got up high. Granson stuck his foot up. He actually kicked the ball, and the officials didn't catch it. And it came back to Morgan State. Now it's Granson underneath and in. But he got away with a kick ball. 74-62. A couple of threes here get Hornets healthy again as they're down by 12. <laughs> Oh, Woo! I think Dominic Fergala heard me. Wow. He just dropped it in from NBA range. Yeah. 74-65, down by nine. He was real deep on that one. Yep. Had the shot. A minute and 45 to go. Morgan State now trying to use up a chunk of the clock. To go inside, underneath. Miller had the layup, and he was just too strong. He put it over top. Now, as Robinson tries to come through traffic, they steal the ball away. Martez tried to do a little too much right there. He should have just gave it up. Tried to go between two defenders. Yeah. A minute and 20 to go. The Hornets down by nine. They need a steal here, and they need a takeaway. Morgan State wants to use up clock. They'll send it out to Miller. He thought about three, but he didn't want to shoot yet. They're trying to take the clock, shot clock down to four seconds underneath. Didn't hit the backboard. It'll go out of bounds. Hornets ball with a minute left. And I don't know if that's enough time to make up nine points. <laughs> Anything's possible, Gary. As long as there's time on the clock, you got time to score. Yep. But they're going to have to hit from outside the arc, I think, to get it. Well, the man with the ball can do it. He did. He just got the last one. But they're taking a little bit too much time coming down. Fregala now drives inside. Goes up for the shot. He gets fouled. He'll go to the line to shoot two. That'll help. 
Scoring baskets while the clock's not moving. Kavanish, his second personal. But Dominic Fergala into double figures here with 11 so far. Would like to make it 13 before he leaves there. And again, putting points on the board when the clock isn't running. Stopped with 50.5 seconds to play. Fergala's first shot is good. Israel Palmer comes back in now for Delaware State as Robinson gets a breather. And Fergala hits both. Needed them. 74-67. And a is. steal by Miles Carter. He'll go between two defenders. Pull up. Send it back out to Fergala on the right side. They need to do something quickly here. Time getting away as they're down by seven. 36 seconds. Kent from the right corner. Too strong over top of everything. Palmer tries to go up with the, the rebound. And he gets blocked. And then traveling. Called as Morgan State took the ball away. And they got called for traveling. Hornets ball with 28 and a half seconds left. Down by seven. If they can hit a three here, take it to four, and get a quick foul, it'll be a new ball game. They still got time. How about shoot a three, make it, and get that fouled in the act, huh? Make it a four-point play? Uh, that'd be even better. We saw that uh, earlier in the season. Dominic Fergala did it. And I think that's what they're looking for here is to end up right in front of the bench, Fergala's favorite area to shoot a three. Or Miles Carter. Fergala now inside. Shot missed. Loose ball. They tip it out, and Morgan State will get it. Corey Perkins almost stole it away for Gala, acting uh, like he wants to take it away. They send it down, and Granson with a dunk. And that puts the icing on the cake for Morgan State as they go up 76-67 with 11.7 seconds left on the clock. Hornets were not able to execute that inbound the way they wanted to. I really think they wanted to get either Fergala or uh, Carter in front of the bench to shoot the three. Hornets had the ball now. Israel Palmer to inbound it. They have to bring it down quickly. They try to tie up Carter in the backcourt. And they're slowing him down, and that's going to be the problem. Carter will take it down, and he'll maybe get the final shot, or Israel Palmer will take it. And he gets it just before the buzzer, but it's not enough. Not as enough. Israel Palmer gets it, but it's Morgan State 76, Delaware State 69. They had gotten within two here in the fourth quarter, and it looked like they were going to make a chase at the end. Well, they did, but they Start chased the fight. dog that got a little bit faster. Yeah, they started their fight a little too late. Yeah. Uncharacteristic of Dell State these last four or five games. They just keep getting close, 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 but unable to pull it out. And over the last four games now, losing by a total of 20 points over the last four games. That's an average of five points a game. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yet you just somehow have to take it over the next level. And Some memories uh, here for these seniors, their last time being on this floor. Yep. And they will line up for the alma mater here. For the final time for the seniors, Miles Carter is going to finish this game with 35 points for Delaware State. I send it back to the studio and we'll wrap it up in a moment.